Thanks everybody for coming out. I am Layla, the director of Grace Revealed, and we have um, just a really cool lineup today for our self-care Saturday. So I just want to start with a, a word of gratitude and say thank you for putting yourself first this morning, being able to set aside time, resources. I know um, it's not easy to give up a Saturday for this kind of thing. So, you know, I'm gonna hold this because I'm a mover. Um, but this is Self Care Saturday. We, I'm just gonna do a quick rundown on our tentative schedule. I am left-handed and um, sometimes, <laughs> ah, I got some other lefties in the house, my people. Um, all right, so just really quick, we got everybody registered and checked in. We may still have some people flowing in, so we, uh, we just try to leave them to come in. We have a couple seats for people to sneak in here and get settled. Um, but I'm just going to do a quick run through of what you can um, anticipate for a tentative schedule. Because if you've been to a workshop, anybody, is this a first time workshop for anybody in general? Workshop? Okay. So workshops, um, I like to say tentative because sometimes we get to sharing things and it stirs up conversation. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about the guidelines for the workshop because it is our goal for you to take away the most that you can. And a lot of that will play out in everyday life, not just a one-time hit of an experience and like, yay, and then tomorrow you forget what we talked about. We want lasting change. We want to see um, things stir up in you so that we can get free from, from things that are not self-care. All right, so um, I'm going to... Get us started with the basics of self-care will be our first session today. I'm going to get into that and do a presentation, but I'm going to talk a little bit about encouraging participation. I had a former participant who said she had a good way of putting it, and she said, you get out of it what you put into it. If you didn't um, receive a welcome bag, please make sure you see Jill. She'll get you hooked up with a welcome bag. There's journals in there for a reason. They're there so that you can take away whatever jumps out to you. If you have something resonates with you, please write it down in a way that makes sense. If you wanna, if you're artsy and you need to draw a picture or whatever, those are for you, not just for here, but um, it's so that, you know, as things resonate with you, that, that awareness is part of what brings some healing. Um, around 11, we are going to have The Biology of Burnout by Rebecca Belschner. She, some of you know her, I may call her Becky. <laughs> she can call herself whatever she wants. Um, <laughs> but she's gonna present to us the biology behind burnout. She is um, really gifted in sharing and educating us. She's a nurse practitioner and has had many years in the medical field and has her own experience with burnout. And so I share, and I've shared my story multiple times, but and you'll hear it sprinkled out. In the last, um, last workshop I did back in July, I spent a lot of time in depth sharing my story. I'm not gonna do that because I believe that it's gonna get sprinkled in throughout our time here today. Um, around 11.45, we will try to leave some time for questions and answers for Becky if you wanna pick her brain on anything medically going on or just give some feedback. We really value feedback and sometimes um, what's going on or what gets stirred up in you, if you're willing to share, it helps add value to this workshop today. So I wanna encourage you to participate as you feel willing or able. Um, around 12 o'clock, we're gonna have lunch provided by Panera. Uh, they are going to be bringing box lunches that have sandwiches, there's a variety and um, we can I'll tackle that, that's pretty simple. We're all grown adults, <laughs> easy peasy. Um, and then 12.45, we'll come back into, I'm gonna be covering community over isolation and the benefits of that and what that looks like. And then I'll kind of do a recap and leave some time for connection. Leave some time, you know, if you meet somebody here today, I just really, really encourage you to, um, maybe see what kind of courage might rise up in you to maybe ask for a phone number, stay connected to maybe somebody that you, you aren't 
connected with today. And then two o'clock, we'll get you out of here. All right, so that's what you can anticipate for a schedule. All right, so I'm gonna cover the workshop guidelines. Um, I just am gonna say thank you again. I'm really glad for all the people that put time and effort into getting this space ready. If you've ever put on any kind of event, you know it's a lot of hard work. It's days worth of effort. It's a lot of prayers going up and a lot of little details. And so I just wanna say thank you to all the people that have helped Grace Reveal this week and leading up to this. Thank you, George, for filming. And um, we are recording. It's mainly so that we can help continue to carry this message of hope. Um, really and truly, uh, most of you will not be in any of the recording unless you're up here, okay? Um, so our workshop guidelines, safety first. Um, the tagline for Grace Revealed is a safe place to let go and heal. And um, part of the reason I talk about safety is that you know that you're safe. There's a, there's a little child inside each of us that needs to know we're safe. We have tissues because sometimes things that are resonating with you may trigger some, some tears, and, and that's really positive. You gotta feel to heal. <laughs> so you may have heard before, and uh, it's really true. We have to feel some pain to let go of it so that the healing can flow in where the pain once was. So no fixing or rescuing. Um, I don't know about you, but I get real feisty if I feel like somebody's trying to fix me or rescue me. I will run out of here. So an effort for me to stay here. <laughs> I need everybody to commit to no fixing or rescuing. Uh, the temptation, sometimes we do it without thinking, is to um, say, oh, you should do that. Oh, oh, honey, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's okay. We can um, use statements like, I believe, or in my experience when we're sharing. So we just ask that you follow that and just thank you for that. Um, sharing is based on your own experience, thoughts, and feelings. Uh, participation is optional, but encouraged. You don't have to participate. Just by being here, we really believe that you're gonna receive what you need to receive today. Uh, but I do believe as you're willing to participate, it adds value. Um, the other reason I wholeheartedly believe in participation is statistically proven that in small groups where feedback is given, healing goes deeper, quicker. Okay, that's part of the reason. I am, I research this stuff a lot. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars for my own healing journey. And that's part of the reason I love to offer these, that we put these together so that healing can happen deeper and quicker for you who show up for your healing. Um, okay, I already said this, you'll get out of it what you put into it. And this is probably the most important one on here is let's have some fun. It's okay to laugh. If we laugh, we cry, we might cry. It's okay. I just want to encourage you that you're, you are safe here. Um, the other thing I'm going to mention uh, before I jump into the, the basics of self-care is that uh, the word unraveling comes to mind. Some of the things that I'm about to present may trigger or resonate a painful spot in you. I was kind of a little triggered as I was getting ready for this. I was like, oh, that's me. You know, but that is me. And that's the reason I do it because change is possible. And a lot of change can happen in a short amount of time. But um, you see these fine folks back in the corner, Roger and Shirley, they are a team, but they are also very gifted in inner healing. They love Jesus. I'm not a big um, preacher. I don't think anybody needs another church to go to. We're not here to talk about church. But they are gifted. And so if there is an unraveling in you emotionally, um, we're not here to be therapists or anything like that, but they are willing and able to minister to you or pray you through something that's tough. If you need a private spot or just pull, you know, go into a corner or something, they're equipped and trained and love people. And they also love Jesus and have walked their own healing journeys. So I encourage you to ask for help 
if you are in a spot of unraveling, it's really okay. And you're really in a safe place. I am also trained to help. So if we have any kind of um, unraveling, we're, we're trained and we're able to help you, okay? Uh, any questions about that before we get rocking and rolling? All right. I already talked about that, didn't I? That's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> okay. So the basics of burnout. I truly believe that we all have different ways that we learn. Some of us are readers, some of us are writers, some of us are visual, some of us are listeners. Anybody wanna um, out themselves and just share what way you receive best? Like, which, what's your learning style? Anybody? Listening, Listening hearing, oral. oral. Anybody else? One-on-one. -on -one. One -on -one. Okay, thank you. Reading. Reading. Yeah. yeah, okay. Anybody else? And that might change. You know, for me, it depends on the topic. Mm -hmm. You know, it definitely can contain. Um, I'm going to just start us off with a few deep breaths. All right. So I just encourage you to breathe in deeply, deep in your gut. If you can, just get it all in there. And as we breathe out together, like let go of all the distractions. I have a little heaviness in my mind and heart. So we're going to do this together. So I just encourage you to breathe in real deep and then we're going to hold it in. And then we're going to breathe out, push it out through your mouth and just as much out as you can. And then we're going to hold it out. Okay, ready? Got one more in you? Let's do it again. Hold it and push it out. Okay. Yes. All right. For anybody that is a reader or like some visuals, I have these that can be kind of passed around if people are willing to help um, just get these out. These are for you to have a visual, but to also have something to take home. Um, this is a lot of stuff. It's a lot of information, but it is for you. And it is to help. I am not huge into acrostics, but there's some, um, <laughs> there's some groups out there that some of us are familiar with that use them, and uh, I am gonna use one today, <laughs> or at least it's in the printout, the basics of self-care. Um, and what I've done here is I've picked a few that I really believe are going to be important, um, are gonna be important. So the first one in the basics is B, behavioral, behavioral, okay? So am I consistent with my values? These are questions and they're phrased this way because I, I would like you to ask yourself these questions while you're sitting here. This is really and truly about what's going on with you internally. It's not something, you know, this isn't an exercise class and when we're done you're gonna feel more buff and strong immediately, you know, it's not a crafting thing. It's, it's about change inside. Um, so, am I consistent with my values? Uh, the next one is, do I follow through with commitments to myself and others? Am I consistent, intentional, and deliberate? Do I prioritize meaningful activities? Do I have compulsive or destructive behaviors that I'm ashamed of? Okay. So what's happened is we all have history. We all had different parents or influences. It may not have even been our parents. It could have been siblings. It could have been family members. Um, but in my experience, it has groomed me 
for different behaviors that I do today, sometimes without thinking. And the natural bend in me, if I'm not wholeheartedly working on well-being, is self-destruction. I don't even have to think about it. If I'm tired and I didn't eat and I'm cranky, the thoughts that flow through my head are not, oh, how can I value myself? <laughs> okay, does anybody have that thought when you're hungry and tired? You do, because you've done a lot of work. Yeah, I can smell it in your demeanor because you're valued and you know it. Um, and thank you for your honesty. So that's part of the goal. That's part of the reason we come here is so that a shift and a change in us can happen. I had an experience recently. I was um, in a church service and a woman was speaking and she told her story. We don't have the same story at all, but something in her story was like a, a knife to my gut. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, I think that pinpointed a place of pain in me. And I, my physiological response was I started slunking down in my chair. I was like, where's the tissues? Who's watching? Oh, Lord, I was in the front row. And somebody snuck a box of tissues right under my face so I could see them. And I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm crying. I'm, I'm going to feel this one. Um, because I believe when I get those that I had so many years of practice numbing and ignoring those gut checks that today I can say, oh, God, what do you want to heal inside me? What are you revealing? What is this story exposing in me that hasn't had a touch of wholeness yet? And so, gosh, that's my prayer for today. If something that you hear or maybe even see, maybe it's something I'm not saying or something Becky doesn't say, but that you hear that you need to take away today, please don't ignore it. Please feel it and please grab someone if you want to process something. If we don't have time today, there's resources. We have professional resources that we can connect you with. But this is a time to experience some of those and not ignore. All right. I'm going to keep going here. Any other questions on behavioral before we move on? Thoughts? I resonate with them all. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. I resonate with most of them. Ah, uh, Terry said she, it, she resonates. It resonates with most of them. So yeah. There is part of me, I um, find medicine and music. I'd like to put on a little instrumental music in the background. You guys okay with that? Any objections? All right. Thankfully, it's only a few clicks away. Um, I have people in my life that adopt me as their daughter because the humans that produced me are not safe. And they weren't safe when I was growing up, but the dysfunction felt comfortable. And today, um, there's been people that choose to adopt me as their own. And it's a wonderful thing. So Roger and Shirley back there are some of those people. I had a woman a couple nights ago want to adopt me as um, she wanted to be my mom. <laughs> Man, all right, I can be your daughter too, <laughs> you know. Um, it's amazing sometimes just thinking outside of the box. You know, we've, we've experienced the word family may mean something to you that it doesn't mean to me, okay? My blood relatives are not safe. And so today I have to be really deliberate this is actually one of my favorite ones. Consistent, intentional, and deliberate. For those of you that know me, know that I live my life with intention. And if I don't, it's messy. 
I was trying to think of words that weren't um, aggressive on the ears. <laughs> if I'm not being deliberate, things get sloppy. And if I'm not being deliberate about self-care, my natural instincts are, you're not good enough, Layla. Nobody wants you. You're not, you know, nobody really knows you. They're not going to be able to hear what you're saying. You know, all those like creepy, painful voices that I did hear that were real voices from people when I was a kid, but they left a mark in me. Um, okay. Any other thoughts on this one before I get going into A, effective? Okay. Effective. So, do I feel good about myself? Do I feel good about myself? Anybody feel good about themselves today? Yeah. yeah. Today, right now. All right. <laughs> yes. Today, right now is good. I like that answer. In the moment. Yeah, it's, it's not always. For me today, yeah, I feel good about myself. I got a couple of compliments on my hair. I don't love it, but thank you. Um, you know, I feel good physically. Yeah, I'm able to stand. I have energy. Um, am I able to experience my emotions? Yes, I can say yes to that. Anybody? Or am I able to experience my emotions? For a long time, I didn't really know what emotions were. I knew what, what sadness felt like. Fear was a good friend of mine, and I knew what anger was. Uh, I went to a clinical intensive workshop once, and the first, they, they wanted to educate us about core emotions, so we didn't get overwhelmed, right? We've seen the chart, you know, with like the faces and, you know, it helps kids identify their emotions, and they kept talking about this emotion that was really unfamiliar to me, and um, it was called gladness. <laughs> I was like, what's that? <laughs> Joy, gladness. I was like, I think I'm allergic to that one. <laughs> okay, it wasn't my natural bend. It wasn't. If you guys have met George in the back, he is like, sometimes his name gets mistaken for joy. <laughs> he went through the drive through the other day. They put his name Joy on his uh, order uh, because he's joyful. His name's George, but whatever. Um, he's a natural inclination toward gladness. Uh, to me, I have to work hard at it or just hang out with George and then I feel better. <laughs> He is my boyfriend. Um, don't get any ideas, people. Uh, <laughs> am I able to experience my emotions? So there's, there's core emotions. Gladness is one of them. Fear, hurt, loneliness. Guilt. There's one more. Anybody want to fill me in? There's a couple different beliefs out there what the core emotions are, but um, we don't have to get into that today. But being able to experience emotions when they arise and not try to push them back down is a real skill I've had to work on. The phrase, this too shall pass, is like medicine. When, when something comes up, I, oh, I can feel this. It's going to pass. It's not forever. I'm disappointed okay, this is going to pass. Wow, this person hurt me. Whoo, I'm feeling rejection. Handala, it's going to go. It's, it's going to be okay. It's going to pass. Okay, next, do I engage in enjoyable activities every day? Got some head shakers out there. Anybody? Do I, en do I ex engage in enjoyable activities every day? Yeah. Ah, I have to. Ooh. Okay. So maybe please make a note to yourself. Find enjoyable activities every day. I am that person that goes through the flower aisle in the grocery store, will stop, and bend myself over, and smell those flowers until I smell them and smell good. Some of them don't smell so good. 
just so you know. Really, they're like pretty and it's like, oh, that doesn't match, that doesn't line up, you know. Roses are a fail safe, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> but sometimes to literally just stop and smell the roses or flowers, some other ones, lilies, there's a lot of different other ones. I'm not a botanist or whatever you call it, but um, anyway. Um, that, that alone can be my activity to enjoy life. Um, I used to be a part of doing a lot of groups in a, a group, it was a 12-step community called Adult Children of Alcoholics or Dysfunctional Families. And one of the promises in there is that we'll learn how to have fun and play. We'll learn how to play. And I was like, what, what, what is that? What is play? But the more gentle I learned to be with myself, the more I found play. Even chewing gum, blowing bubbles can be play. Maybe offering a hug to someone can be play. And so I constantly look for ways to engage enjoyable activities, even if it's singing in the shower, okay? Or dancing, wiggling. <laughs> Wiggling, yeah. Well, careful, people. Careful. <laughs> Wiggling when I cook. Um, to look for ways to enjoy this beautiful life, this day that we have. Okay. Are there fears or painful emotions that I avoid feeling at any cost? A good question. I have a couple that are really difficult for me these days. Abandonment. I don't know if guys deal with this so much, but I feel like girls are really good at pushing people away. I don't know. I'm guilty of it myself. Like, don't touch me. Don't talk to me. I don't even want to make eye contact with you. You know, if I feel like I might not even know them, but they might remind me of someone that has hurt me in the past. And I'm like, avoid, avoid, avoid. Okay. And then um, disappointment. Disappointment is very difficult to sit with. I am a recovering compulsive overeater. And food is sneaky. How I've used it to medicate and push down those feelings and didn't even realize how long I had really perfected that art. I like to be good at things, and sometimes I'm good at self-destruction. <laughs> oh, God help us. Okay. Um, but it's a, it's a good question. Fear alone is risky. Roger shared this, uh, this acrostic with me once about fear, false evidence appearing real. Did you know that 96% of our fears never come to pass? That was before COVID, people. Okay. <laughs> I had some creepy fears. <laughs> okay. 96% uh, of our fears never come to pass. The 4% that do are never as, as bad as we imagine them to be. We talked earlier, we have some lefties in the house. How about some creatives? Any artsy, creative people types? Our lefties, thank you. Ah, <laughs> my people, okay. But part of being a lefty is there's a creative gene. There's a creative part of our brain. And for me, my, my imagination is wild. It doesn't mean <laughs> that those things are gonna come to pass. But I think my fears are extra dynamic because of that creative um, part of who I am. I imagine things wildly and it's dangerous. So today, I tell myself every morning, almost every morning, that reality is not as bad as I think. Reality is not as bad as I think. And choosing to check in and to be present Today is such a gift, and it makes the present more vibrant, more rich.
Yes. And what was fear meant false evidence appearing? appearing real. So the question was, what is the acrostic for fear? False evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. I think some people call that the news. <laughs> 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 or, the <laughs> or the weather. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. I, I, we <laughs> I got sure just ready. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to see if you were paying attention. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I mean, we, we talked about one of the guides, uh, guidelines is having fun today, right? Okay. <laughs> I try to be a woman of my word have integrity, okay? Hi. All right, <laughs> last one on here. Are feelings of depression or anxiety overwhelming me at times? Oh. The reason these are on here is to take note of how we're doing. It, are those things overwhelming me? Are the waves crashing and I can't catch my The reason we're taking time to be aware of this in us is so that the solution can be made known. Is that if it's okay to say, if it's okay to admit, oh God, anxiety is just creeping over me right now and I don't know how to shake it. I'm going to get into that, but it's okay to just say, hey, I need some help. I need somebody that's found a way out. Okay, we're gonna move on to S. You ready? All right. Somatic. Am I, I'm gonna let Becky explain a little bit more about somatic, but it's really our ner you know, nerves, what we're sensing. Okay. Am I attentive to my physical health and well being? Before I made a courageous commitment to go to any length, to be well. I was very unkept. Unke what's that word? Unkempt. Unkempt. Like days would go by and I was like, oh, did I even brush my teeth? Did I take a shower? Am I wearing cl clean clothing? Um, that's humbling to admit. I grew up in a compound with 11 people. Okay. I had eight siblings and two parents that were there, but they weren't there. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think they did the best they could. They wanted to love us, but I don't know that they knew how to love because of how, where they came from in the storm of dysfunction they came out of. But the reason we do this is because healing is available. And as we note the things inside of us, what our body tells us, what our emotions are telling us, um, it, as we're willing to take an assessment of ourselves, am I attentive to my physical health and well-being? Do I seek medical care when needed? Seeking medical care, mm -hmm. even if it's getting your teeth cleaned, is part of self-care. Am I willing to carve out that 90 bucks? or a 150 or whatever it is to get your teeth clean these days? <coughs> or am I making sure I have that health insurance benefit? I don't know, to value my body. Do I get enough sleep, rest, and nutrition? One of the gifts I give myself is some good sleep. I'm protective of it. I used to burn the candle so bad, go to bed at 2 a.m. every night, get up at 6 or 7, boom work eight or nine hours, play for the rest of the day, whatever I was, whatever shenanigans I was doing, and I was burning myself out. <clears throat> rest and nutrition. I assure you, when you rest, you will find your best. And Roger repeatedly reminds me about rest, that, he, that we can do so much in God's rest. When we take time to be still, energy comes back physiologically. 
if you carve out time for yourself to literally do nothing, and I mean literally do nothing, I was handicapped at doing nothing. Any doers out here? I heard that phrase like, we're human beings, not human doings. And I'm like, oh, that's terrible. I don't know how to be, you know? <laughs> I learned because I was bedridden for about 18 months because my body crashed. Yeah. Um, and I just shut down. My organs began to shut down. And my adrenaline was almost depleted, so it was affecting my heart. My brain was hospitalized for my heart. It was pausing about eight times a day, uh, three to four seconds. You think about that? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four. I saved the printout, the heart scan. I had a heart monitor on and literally flatline. I'd be here and then I'm on the ground, lights out. People are like, do we call the ambulance? <laughs> We didn't know what was going on. My heart was stopping. Ow. Yeah. What was that doing to my brain? Mm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you that I'm alive and well today. Mm. Not without facing my feelings and getting enough rest and sleep and good nutrition. <laughs> Am I in tune with the signals from my body? I literally, this is embarrassing. I literally thought it was a joke when people said, oh, you got to listen to your body. I'm like, <laughs> That's cute. What? That's a real thing. I thought that most of my adult life. That's embarrassing to admit. You got to listen to your body. No, legitimately. Our body sends us signals that indicates exactly what we need. You ever have a craving for spinach? No. You ever have a craving for chocolate? You ever have a craving for certain proteins? Our bodies know us and know what we need. We are uniquely designed and our bodies signal. You ever feel exhausted? Not that anyone here knows what that feels like. <laughs> Becky, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Um, <laughs> so, okay, right? I remember when my body was shutting down I just kept praying for the answer and I just kept hearing do nothing. And I was like, I don't know how to do that. I literally remember just weeping and said, I don't know how to do that. What do you mean do nothing? So I'll read a book. N no, that's not the answer. I'll listen to music. No, that can tax your system if you are not well enough to handle it. Do nothing. So I got down on the ground and I laid there until I felt all the anxiety, all the fear begin to drain from my body. And I just prayed for wholeness to fill in its place. Ooh, last one. Do I harm or mistreat my body in any way? I'm from New York and I'm sort of a crazy driver sometimes. I don't even realize I do it. Like I get tense and I'm like, come on people. And like down south, like nobody honks. I'm like, what's wrong with you people? Like, and, the, and I remember my first couple of weeks when I lived down, moved down here a couple of years ago, I honked and I felt shame wash over me. Like <laughs> eyes were like, we don't honk down here. And I was like, oh. And I literally have honked, I think, twice in like two years. And I'm like, it's got to be like real safety, like <laughs> danger is about to happen. Or, yeah, so I've learned to like flash my lights a little bit. But, you know, so sometimes I get tense when I'm driving because I'm like, oh my gosh, they don't honk down here. I got somewhere, you know. And part of self care is being on time. <laughs> nice. I need help with that too. Sorry, George. Um, but do I harm or mistreat my body in any way? I told you earlier I'm recovering from compulsive overeating, stuffing myself with things that some people might even say is healthy, but really I was harming myself because I didn't want to feel the feelings. But self-harm can happen in lots of different ways, even by neglect. Have you guys heard the term acting out? 
So we act out, we have a strong reaction to something. What about acting in? Anybody hear of that? Where you avoid. You, 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 do, you decide to not give yourself something. You act in. So you withdraw. You don't do something. You don't speak when maybe you can. Or you avoid interaction. You isolate. We're going to get into that later. Oh, any questions or comments before I move on to the next? All right. I, interpersonal. There is part of me that loves to be a little bit of a rule bender. Anybody else out there? Anybody like to go against the grain a little bit? Hey, thank you. Yeah. Really? None of you else rule benders? Okay, all right, I bless you anyway. Um, so sometimes I, I, I truly believe that God's gifted me to think outside of the box. I don't know if it's because I'm a lefty or what, but my brain loves to think outside of the box. I was in a box in my childhood. I was homeschooled for the primitive years, and, and thank God I, I got into the school system middle of fourth grade, sixth, fifth, I think I skipped a grade. I, I mean, I did skip a grade, excuse me. I skipped sixth grade and then went full time into school around seventh grade. Um, but I was in this little bubble. So um, I learned to, to claw for information. I had to beg one of my sisters to teach me how to read because my mom was a little checked out. And I, I was just really wanted to learn how to read. And I've just always been kind of a scrapper. I'm also going to share a little bit about that later. Um, but that has gifted me with thinking outside of the box, going against the grain sometimes. So one of the things on here is, do I treat others as I would like to be treated? And I really felt led to change the words and say, do I treat myself the way I'd like others to treat me? See how those words are a little different? So the first one says, it's on your sheet, do I treat others as I would like to be treated? And I'm challenging you to think with me a little differently and I, I put on here, do I treat myself the way I'd like others to treat me? I will admittedly share that I was groomed to treat myself like garbage. By who? My family. At a young age, we were trained to jump in dumpsters for food mm -hmm. and clothing, sometimes bedding, and it was okay to live like garbage. I'll, I'll never forget the days of jumping and swimming around in dumpsters mm -hmm. with just filth everywhere. And I grew to let other humans treat me like garbage. That's how I saw myself. Today, I can say I treat myself with value, mm -hmm. and I expect that from close people around me because I'm worth it. I'm valuable. I am wanted. It was easy to feel unwanted in a sea of humans. I was third of nine children. I helped raise some of them. It was easy to believe that I was worthless. <coughs> Groomed for it. How would I know any different? <coughs> How would you know any different? So do I treat myself with the way I'd like others to treat me? Good question to keep in mind on a regular basis. When I wake up, when I wash my hair, when I take care of myself. Am I prioritizing people in my life appropriately? Do the right people get the right time allotments? Or do you find yourself with soul-sucking vampires around you? <laughs> ah, ha, ha, that might have hit a spot for some people. Am I prioritizing people in my life appropriately? One of the things we don't have time for, or is it on the schedule, about boundaries, but knowing where I end and another person begins. I never knew what the word boundaries meant. 
I thought that was just like a cute phrase people talked about. I mean, I didn't know I had boundaries. Hi. Do I have supportive relationships with people who know, value, and affirm me? If you haven't been affirmed today, go hang out with Roger and Shirley. They have <laughs> affirmations for you. They used to tell me they loved me, and I was like, ooh, can we use other words? Like, <laughs> you know, my, my family of origin used to use those three words as manipulation. And I'd be like, what do you want from me? And like, we don't have an agenda with you. I'm like, yeah, what is it? What do you want? I would like literally cringe, and they're like, oh, we actually love her. How, hmm. <laughs> All right, so if you need an affirmation, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, are my friendships reciprocal and mutually rewarding? Any givers in the house? Yeah, givers, lovers, generous. Strong heart chakra. Ooh. Yeah, very strong. Ah, do you find yourself with takers around you? Um, yeah, good takers. Ah, there's a difference between a receiver and a taker. Ah, some people receive because it's mutual and they have something to give you and it's balanced. It's balanced. Do I struggle with loneliness, isolation, or, this is a big one, unresolved conflict? You ever get near somebody and immediately your brain flashes back to how they hurt you? Could be years ago. Oh, unresolved conflict. It just reminds us that there is a resolution. We don't have to make it up, but there is a way to resolve conflict with people that are willing to. Okay. Keep going here. Cognitive, We're getting close. Cognitive. Are my thoughts rational and anchored in reality? I will tell you, before I entered into this ACA, they, oh, they talked about emotional sobriety. And I was like, what? What is that? Emotional sobriety. Because I found myself most of my life uh, wanting to be somewhere else because there was so much pain in the present that I began to train my brain to check out and go into fantasy. I would daydream. I didn't even know I was doing it. I started at a very young age of just going somewhere else. Eventually, I ended up working in architecture. I went to school for interior design and I would imagine things and get paid to do it. So I would imagine things and then I'd put them on paper. And people are like, wow, how'd you come up with that? I was groomed for fantasy. Somehow God blessed me with making money at it in a structured way. Um, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so are my thoughts rational and anchored in reality? I had to begin to check in. I had to begin to check in. And that meant being aware of my thoughts and feelings. Even if we all went around the room and just checked in and named one feeling right now, even if it's discomfort, even if it's, I feel like I'm about to cry right now, even if it's joy or gladness, I, to identify one thing is part of how I began to check in so that I wasn't somewhere else. Sometimes I've been guilty of using music to check out TV, shopping, unhealthy relationships, food, right? We're covering. There's lots of other ways. Um, ah, is gratefulness and hope prominent in my thought life? Is gratefulness and hope prominent in my thought life? Hope's a big one. Am I able to concentrate on tasks and conversations and really be present with those who are right in front of me. <clears throat> Healing for me was a very messy process. Very messy. Very messy. Tears, crying, groveling, maybe a little deliverance. If anybody's seen that movie. Um, 
But I, I say that because today I am truly able to concentrate on tasks and conversations with listening and being able to engage appropriately with someone in the moment. Am I curious, creative, and interested in learning new things? Or do I have it all figured out? <laughs> I encourage you with the curious, creative, and interested in new things. Do I have any persistent, negative, disturbing, or self-defeating thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. Our brains do tricky things sometimes. Yeah. Were you going to say something, Roger? Oh, I thought you were raise your hand. All right. Spiritual. Do I honor God's will for my life? I am not big into religion. I honestly don't care for it very much at all. <laughs> but I have began begin to pro, um, practice, excuse me, practice seeking God's will for my life. And when I use the word God, I, I'm talking about the author of love the creator of love. The God of the Bible. Am I secure in God's unconditional love, acceptance, and approval of me? Whether you have a connection with God or not, the fact in reality is that there is a spiritual realm. There is a spiritual realm. There are spiritual things. We do have spirits. We are, we do have a spirit. And I don't wanna see people I care about be ignorant of that. That sometimes there are things that affect our ability to break those cycles if we have those repeating negative patterns in our mind. Is my faith put into practice? Again, I'm not here to preach religion. I'm here to share a message of hope and healing in my story, in Becky's story, and to help bring awareness to who we are as people so that healing can take root. But it's a dynamic process that can be unseen. Do I experience inspiration and awe daily? Do I experience Experience, inspiration, and awe daily. Does anybody have a friend that just inspires them? Or maybe somebody you like to watch on TV or YouTube? Ah, maybe your partner, friend. Yeah. Um, I just moved to the ocean and I wake up and I'm like, oh my. I just, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm experiencing more breath work because I wake up and I'm like, oh my gosh, wow, wow. It's a temporary spot for me. I'm there for the winter, but I just wake up and I'm like, oh my goodness, wow. Like a little girl. I'm like, oh my gosh. All right. Are there aspects of my life that seem dry? dull and meaningless. Sometimes I've felt like that about vehicles, <laughs> you know? <laughs> There's ways we experience things, like sometimes I feel like that about the food I eat. Occasionally, I love my food now, um, but occasionally I feel like, oh, this is boring. Okay, to pay attention to when we feel like that, because it's okay to admit it so that we can ask God to bring in something more vibrant. Am I in the last one? I think I'm on the last one. Yeah, it's 1101. Yeah. All right. Okay. <coughs> Anybody willing to tell on themselves if they're having any thoughts or feelings as I was sharing that? Jill. Mm. So I was supposed to be here. 
So Jill shared that she came to volunteer to help me, but somehow in, in turn, she's hearing things that are helping her. Thanks for sharing that. Anybody else? Anything stirring in you? Uh, when you were speaking about the, somebody was speaking and the healing in their stomach, mm -hmm. so I know, because I do believe the pain is from an emotional issue, and I've been having stomach issues with cramping, abdomen, and in my bladder, it, to me, that's pissed off. Ah. I share something that's pissed off. So, yeah. I don't know if you're getting more into the emotion to help me bring that out. Yeah. Mm. So, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. So, she talked about a pain in her abdomen and just feeling pissed off and wanting to kind of dig mm -hmm. or maybe just see what comes up. Yeah. Maybe you just could put your shovel down. Ah, ah, let some healing love go in there. That would be torture. Ah, thanks for sharing that. Go ahead. When we do covering, I, I deal in the, the ideal nap for all. Ooh. Um, in our third session, we are going, we're not going to nap, but we are we're going to. <laughs> uh, we are going to do a five minute meditation. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but there is, um, you know, sometimes I have to be careful. Sometimes um, Roger and Shirley will pray for me to rest and I just want to like pass out on their couch or I have, or I'm like, can I take the spare room for 20 minutes? And uh, I do. I'm like, um, there are open benches up here if you do need to take a nap for a few minutes. Um, <laughs> I am happy to share about ideal, you know, ways to wind down, to take a nap or to rest or prepare to wind down for a nap. At age 67, I feel like I need a nap every day. Or maybe I have some respectfully Mexican blood in me. Oh. You know, they're the smart ones. They take a siesta every day and huh. go again. Could be just in your DNA. Naps are calling. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So she asked about a, an ideal. Are we going to talk about an ideal nap? Um, not necessarily, but we can we can chat after. Okay. Pam. I've been stranded and broke in, so I take naps without saying them out. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> if anyone needs a nap during this workshop, I truly will not be offended. I love how God works, and sometimes if you are finally finding a place of safety and rest here, then by all means. Wow. There's a plan for each one of us here today, and I have no idea what it looks like, but I welcome it. Any other thoughts or comments before we close this session? Consuelo. Will you share an example? Um, sometimes I don't take a shower. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I, I just, the, the, the French thing does me, I, I don't really uh, engage in my personal uh, hygiene, let's say. Mm -hmm. I get depressed, I get angry. I don't think I'm any of it. Thanks for sharing that. Maybe some light bulbs will turn on when you need it. So we are just going to close this session 
And let's just take a few minutes and let the music play. And if you wanna put your head down, if you wanna write a couple things that come to mind, we're gonna just take a little bit of time for some stillness. You need to get up and use the restroom, do that. And then we're gonna prepare for Becky's session.